In this video, I'm going to cover several design examples. These are introductory in nature, but they will give you a little bit more of an idea about how reinforced concrete design takes place. So in this case, we are going to do a beam design example where we are designing the moment capacity of the beam. In this particular case, uh, I've kept it fairly simple by already prescribing the width and the height of the beam. I also have here a simply supported beam with a 20 foot span. It has a uniform load on it. It has a dead load that's prescribed of 1.5 kips per lineal foot. And we're going to assume that the beam weight itself has already been included in this number. We also have the live load, which is 1.3 kips per lineal foot. We also have some material properties here. We have F sub C prime of 3 KSI and F sub Y of 60 KSI for the steel. Our job in this particular problem is to calculate how much area of steel do we need to have in this bottom, bottom layer of tensile steel. So basically we're going to uh, determine these items, D, A sub S, and in the end we will be able to calculate phi M N and see whether or not it is adequate for the maximum moment that this loading is causing. And so here is the solution. We are going to assume that the beam is going to be inside of a building and hence our clear cover requirements are 1.5 inches. This is the clear distance from the bottom of the beam or the sides or even the top to the nearest bar of steel. In this case the nearest bar will actually be the stirrup. Uh, so uh, in any case that distance needs to be a clear cover of 1.5. We're going to assume number three stirrups. They are 3 8 inch of a diameter and now we are going to calculate actually this quantity D. So we would take 26 inches, which is our total depth. We would subtract the clear cover. We would also subtract the 3 8 diameter for the stirrup. And we would subtract one half of the diameter of these tensile bars. That gives us um, basically the distance from the top of the beam, the compression edge, all the way down to the center of these bars down here. And that's why we make this calculation and we get approximately 23.5 inches. So we will use that for our value for D. Now in this particular problem we don't even know what size our bars are going to be. And so I have at the outset just assumed one inch diameter tensile bars. That's a usually a good thing to assume. Later on, if you find out that that isn't true, you can come back and adjust this if needed. If it turns out they're less than one inch in diameter, then you're, there's probably no reason to come back and change it because this will be conservative. And the change that it will make on the VMN value will probably be quite negligible. So we have now our D value. That was one of the things we wanted to find. The next thing is we need to find M sub U. And that is equal to 1.2 times W sub D plus 1.6 times W sub L. And we get 3.88 kips per lineal foot. Because this is a simply supported beam with a 20 foot span and a uniform load, our maximum mid span moment will be M sub U equal to W sub U L squared over 8. And from that we get 194 kip feet. Now we can estimate the area of steel required and we can use our special estimating formula and that is that the area of steel that we need is going to be approximately m sub u over 4 times d. m sub u is input into this formula in kip feet and we have 4 times the depth d of 23.5 inches. We get out 2.06 square inches. And I am going to suggest that we use three number eight bars. 
those bars are actually one inch in di diameter, which is what we assumed even at this point. So that looks like a good idea. And three number eight bars will give us 2.37 square inches. That's more than the 2.06 that we estimated. So this should probably work just fine. Now, if we calculate phi mn, we're going to have to go through this process here. And the first thing that a person would do is calculate a. This is a lowercase a. And it is calculated by this formula here. And you can just put in the actual area of steel bars that we have chosen to use, 2.37 square inches, 60 ksi for f sub y, 0.85 times 3 ksi for the f sub c prime, and the beam is 14 inches wide. We get 3.98 inches for A. C, the distance from the compression edge to the neutral axis, is equal to A over beta sub 1. And if we calculate that, we get 4.68. We can also, at this point, now that we have this C value, we can calculate what the tensile strain in the bottom layer of steel would be when we reach the ultimate strain in the concrete. By using this formula, D minus C over C times epsilon U, we can calculate 0.0121, and that is greater than 0.005. Therefore, we have not exceeded the maximum amount of steel that is allowed for this particular beam cross-section. Notice in this uh, calculation we use epsilon sub u of 0 0.003 for the concrete. That is typical. And furthermore, because, um, as I said, this epsilon t was greater than 0 0.005, this means that our reduction factor phi is 0.9. It's that simple. Now, once we have phi calculated, we have A, we have the area of steel, the yield stress, we have D, we can use this formula here to calculate phi mn. And if we plug those values in, we get 229 kip feet. The answer will come out in kip inches, but we can divide by 12 and get kip feet. That number, phi mn of 229 kip feet, is greater than m sub u, which was 190, 194 kip feet. So that is very good. That means that our moment capacity is OK. And that's exactly what we wanted to see. This number is reasonably close, but um, it is definitely bigger. So that is good. Now, the next thing here is to check that the minimum amount of required steel has been provided. So we can calculate our steel ratio. We take that area of steel that we chose to use, 2.37 inches squared divided by B times D, and we get 0 0.0072. We also can calculate rho minimum, 3 times the square root of F sub C prime over F sub Y, and notice all of these values are in PSI units. And we get 0 0.00274. That is not greater than this other limit, 200 over F sub Y in PSI units. This is the bigger value of these two. And so this one governs. Our row value is 0 0.0072 which is greater than 0 0.0033. Therefore, we have satisfied the minimum steel ratio requirements. Uh, one thing to consider when designing a beam is to also make sure that these three number eight bars can actually fit in the width of the beam. And it turns out that uh, if you do the proper checks, you would find out that this can fit adequately. Lastly, here's the summary. We have D, 23.5. Area of steel is 2.37 inches squared. And we accomplish that by using three number eight bars. And phi mn is equal to 229 kip feet. The next thing that we can do is we can take that very same problem and that very same cross-section 
and we can imagine doing a very simple basic shear design for that beam. And you notice now I have some stirrups here and I'm saying that I'm going to assume that I have number three bars and that I have a yield strength of 60 KSI for those stirrups. Now if we wanted to find the maximum shear it would be W sub U L over 2 and so if we do that calculation we get 38.8 kips. That is our maximum shear force in this beam. Now I want you to remember that this is a very simple introductory example. When you learn more about this there are some other things that a person can do to make this a little smaller but for now we're just going to use this maximum value it's 38.8 and we can calculate the concrete strength phi v sub c and it is equal to phi times 2 times the square root of f sub c prime times b times d. If we do that we get 27 kips. That is the contribution to the shear resistance provided by this cross-section due to the concrete all by itself. But 27 kips is not greater than V sub U max of 38.8. Hence this 27 kips is not adequate and we also would need to have therefore some shear reinforcement in that cross-section. We know that the total phi Vn is equal to the concrete contribution plus the steel contribution and that all must be greater than or equal to V sub U. And therefore we can solve for the value of force that the steel must resist and it is equal to V sub U minus phi V sub C. That calculation results in 11.8 kips that the steel shear reinforcement must provide. Now uh, if we um, know that that is the amount of reinforcement the steel must provide and we find that that value is less than this quantity phi times 4 times square root of f sub c prime b times d then these are the maximum spacing requirements that are required for the shear reinforcement. This means they cannot, these uh, stirrups up here, cannot be spaced more than these S max values. Well, it turns out in our case that if you check this, you would find that phi, sub, uh, phi V sub S required is less than this, hence these spacing requirements do uh, apply to us. If you go through these calculations, and you can see that I've done them here, you will find that this is um, the one that governs out of these two, but overall out of these three criteria, this one is the smallest. And so S max of 11.75 inches governs. We can use certainly a spacing that is smaller than 11.75 inches, but we can't space our stirrups greater than 11.75 inches according to these code requirements. So now that we have uh, looked at our um, spacing requirements, we can actually calculate what the required spacing is. And so if we take this formula here for phi Vs and we say that it is um, uh, here, we, we already have our phi Vs required, it's 11.8 kips calculated on the previous page. We can rearrange this formula and solve for the spacing that is required on the basis of strength. And if we do that, we're going to get this formula, and we can plug in the numbers, and we would get 19.7 inches. Now, it turns out that that is more than the maximum spacing that's allowed. So what this says to us is that even though we only need those bars at about 20 inches on center, we can't do less than 11.75 we can't do more than 11.75 inches and so 
we will use that maximum there. In this case, I'm just going to round it to round it down to a simple number. Notice I didn't round up, I rounded down because that means it's a tighter spacing making it uh, uh, certainly fall within the 11.75. But to the nearest half inch we have 11.7 uh, I'm sorry 11.5 inches and with that in hand we can verify that our FVN is indeed correct. So we'd have 27 kips for the concrete resistance we put in all of the information into the formula here and, and this is the formula we're using right here for FVS now and here we're putting in the actual spacing we're also putting in the two vertical bars in our stirrup one here and one here so we have a two times the cross-sectional area of a number three bar which is 0.11 square inches we have uh, our F sub Y here our D and our phi factor was out front and this S is down on the bottom we get 20 kips we add those two together we get 47 kips for phi VN and that is certainly greater than V sub U which was 38.8 that is a very simple shear design for a concrete beam and you can kinda of see here now we have our beam we have our three number eight tensile bars on the bottom. We have our number three stirrups at 11 and a half inches on center throughout the whole length of the span. And for construction purposes, we might have just two number three bars at the top so that when they are putting this, uh, this rebar in the formwork, uh, these stirrups don't get knocked out of place and they can tie the top of the stirrup to these uh, number three bars that go all the way along and keep them spaced out properly. Now if we were going to do a column design here is an example uh, of that and in this case I'm just going to give you some axial forces and a moment for the column. So P sub U is 300 kips M sub U is 200 kip feet, and we're assuming a short column. Here's some column uh, material strength properties. The uh, ultimate strength for concrete is 4 KSI, and the yield strength for the steel is 60 KSI. We're going to assume a square column inside a building, and we want to design an adequate column cross section for these forces up here, these factored loads. Well, first off, we can estimate a column size according to this formula that uh, you probably saw in the introduction to concrete column design video. And we get 153 inches squared. Because it is a square column, we can just take the square root of that and get the side length. And in this case, I get 12.4 inches. Now, I'm kind of uh, using some uh, foreknowledge here, and I'm saying, okay, well, it calculated 12.4 inches, but I kind of like 16 better. And uh, the truth is, if you went through this design with 12.4 or something uh, close to that, you would find out the column is uh, too small. It's hard to get in all the steel that you need. And so 16 inches square does a better job. And that's why I'm jumping to that value here. Now, we could also kind of estimate the uh, amount of steel that would be needed along this one layer right here by using that formula we used for beam design. And so we could do 200 kip feet divided by 4 times the depth here in inches. Now this is 16 inches but if we kind of account for the clear distance the stirrups and half the diameter of the bar we might subtract approximately two and a half inches here and we get 3.7 inches square along this one line right there. Well four number nine bar bars would give us four inches square which is about what we need. So why not let's do four number bar 
number nine bars there, four this way, four this way, and four that way. That gives us a nice symmetrical pattern. So once we have those four, um, those, those longitudinal bars designed, and we've spaced them evenly out across the cross section, we can take those and put them into our concrete column computer program and see whether or not it's adequate for these loads up here. So I have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 number 9 bars and uh, in each layer I'm going to have 4, 2, 2, and 4 in each of the layers. So Inputting that information into Concrete Column Designer, we get this interaction diagram. And if I put in M sub U, P sub U right here, um, we can see it is underneath the red line and within the dotted black line. Therefore, our column has the required strength. Now there are some other things that we need to check when we're doing a column design is that and that is that we really do need to check the spacing between bars so like right here this clear spacing has to be greater than 1.5 inches and it also has to be greater than 1.5 times the diameter of a longitudinal bar well if we do that calculation we do get 2.46 inches this is basically 16 inches minus 2 times the distance from the outside surface to the center of the bar minus um, 3 bar diameters also subtracted and then divided by 3 which is this space, this space, and this space. So there's three spaces. So that says that each one of these spaces is 2.46 inches. That's just some basic geometry. So that may not have been clear because I kind of did it fast, but uh, think about that and ask some questions if you need to. Um, but that basically uh, does the check and we see that it is bigger than these numbers. So therefore the spacing between bars is okay. Now since the bar size is number 10 or less, we are required to use number three ties according to the code and those are 3 8 inch diameter and then we also need to determine the spacing of those ties vertically along the height of the column and there are actually three criteria for how you determine the maximum spacing 16 times the longitudinal bar diameter since we were using number 9 bars, those diameters are 1.125 inches, so, so 16 times that is 18 inches. Then we also have 48 times the diameter of the ties, which is 18 inches. And then the least column dimension, which was 16 inches. And that actually turns out to be the smallest of these three, and so that's S max. Our concrete column then is 16 by 16. It has the 12 number 9 bars longitudinally and it has number 3 ties at 16 inch on center and we also have 1.5 inches of clear cover all the way around the steel inside the concrete column. Now the other thing that I want to note is that we could calculate the steel ratio for the gross cross section of this column. We had 12 bars of one square inch each, so 12 times one is 12 square inches, divided by the column area, which is 16 by 16, and we get 0 .047. That number is between the minimum and maximum steel ratio that is allowed by code, and therefore this column cross section is satisfactory. Well, that ends our several examples, and hopefully those are helpful to you. And if you have questions, you can certainly ask me.